Hi folks, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you some evidence that the California wildfires were actually started by a uh, plasma discharge. Uh, remember the video I made a few months back uh, about the anomalous low pressure readings I was seeing on my weather gauges? Well that's all related. So uh, sit back and enjoy and welcome to my new channel. NASA's IBEX and Voyager 1 missions have shattered all conventional ideas about the heliospheric boundary, the region separating our solar system from interstellar space. One of the great surprises for investigators is that the sun's magnetic field is not deflected as it passes beyond the heliosphere into interstellar space, as the standard model predicted. The very fact that the magnetic field has not changed direction also fits with this model because the magnetic field traces the direction of the electric current. And here, if you look back at the planetary nebula M2-9, you can see that the current from the star travels outwards a great distance beyond the heliosphere in the same plane as the solar wind. And this is precisely what the Voyager spacecraft have found. IBEX has discovered that the heliosheath is dominated not by the sun, but by the galaxy's magnetic field. And since the galaxy's magnetic field traces the direction of interstellar electric current flow in space near the Sun, it's a result that conforms to the electric universe model of galaxies and stars. These are some pictures of Northern Lights plasma tubes with electrical currents running inside of them. This is important as you'll see shortly. You cannot break and reconnect magnetic field lines. However, you can have electric currents or sudden electric discharges which will change the configuration of the magnetic field almost instantly. In this episode, we introduce a new contributor to this community. In this introduction, we ask Jacob to explain some of the most intriguing results he has captured to date. In plasma sculpture, you're basically mixing gases at different pressures and subjecting them to high voltages and getting different colorful effects, if you will. This experiment was inspired by a Space News episode about Martian dust devils that would form. It was hypothesized by Wall Thornhill that these dust storms that form on Mars originate as a result of the tenuous atmosphere of Mars and its it being a low pressure and it causing not an arc discharge but a glow discharge if you will or a, a diffuse discharge this results in the formation of dust devils that will eventually cover the whole planet in in a large dust storm this is a really uh, interesting prediction by the electric universe model uh, especially considering that the number and severity of dust storms on the earth is also increasing so i thought if I put sand inside of my vacuum chamber and remove most of the air and created this low pressure environment and also applied a voltage I might be able to produce some of these dust devils. Notice that the glow discharge was produced in a dry environment of just sand. In this video the you can see a large web of discharges or filaments that are uh, forming in the sand and it's really interesting to see kind of the arc discharge in the sand and the glow discharge at the surface in the low pressure gas. Here's a great picture of a glow discharge coming from the ground. You know what are all these electrical effects having in the ground and where are they originating from? Here's a picture of a plasma discharge underwater in a laboratory and another picture of a plasma discharge coming out of the ocean. You can also see some interesting jets and uh, even some bell-shaped plasmas coming out of the surface in the final moments when most of the vapor is being removed and the vacuum is basically becoming a low pressure system. Here's a plasma rope forming between two spots on the surface of the Earth and notice that one of the spots is apparently a lake. Here's a picture of the Ibex mission map and notice the energy ribbon has a uh, curved shape 
and there are two black holes, one on each end of the ribbon. This is an incredible photo right here. You can plainly see the plasma rope in the background and you can plainly see the arc discharge coming out of the end of it and striking the earth. And where it hits the earth you can see the glow discharge that attracted it. And most of all if you look right where the arc discharge is coming out of the plasma sheath you can see two uh, bright spots and with a thin uh, filament between them uh, and that if I'm not mistaken is what we're seeing here or something similar. Now consider this object photographed inside of a storm cloud. Here's an electro plasma arc discharge forming right next to a lake. Here's another one. Here's a zoomed in close-up of the arc discharge hitting the earth uh, at a temperature of 20,000 degrees Kelvin. Alright, this is a map of the magnetic anomalies in California. And if you look at the locations of the fires, you will see that they cluster around these magnetic anomalies. Alright, this is a map of the Redding Fire. And I live about 60 miles southeast of Redding. And what I want you to notice here is that the, all the fires are located right next to lakes. We have Whiskey Town Lake in the in the middle, and uh, Shasta Lake up in the upper right, and Trinity Lake up in the upper left. Here's a map of the uh, Sacramento fire, and notice again that it's right next to a lake, and of course Sacramento is sitting right on top of a, a large magnetic anomaly. Here's a map of the Mendocino fire, and of course it's right next to a lake again. Here's the Pawnee fire, same thing, right next to a lake. Do you see the pattern going on here? It looks like to me that a plasma is developing in the lake and then discharging over to the magnetic anomaly on the land. But I don't know. Here's two more examples. Now let's take a look at some fires in the far north where the plasma streams are easily vi visible in the atmosphere. And in this one, uh, notice there's a lake right there with a searchlight on the shore, out on the lake. Here's another fire where you can clearly see plasma glow from uh, both ends of the circuit. Another fire right next to a lake. Here's another fire next to a lake, clearly visible plasma ropes. Here's another example. Here's an interesting photo here. A big house on a lake up north somewhere. Did this guy, was he just unlucky and built on top of a magnetic anomaly or did the electrical system of his house attract the plasma discharge? Getting back to this magnetic anomaly map here. If these discharge events are causing the wildfires and the discharge events are also restructuring the planet's magnetic fields as the poles flip, then uh, shouldn't we be remeasuring these local magnetic fields after large discharge events? Here's an interesting uh, magnetic field map of the Earth. Uh, look at the area up in uh, North America where the, all the wildfires are. And now look at the map of the wildfires out west and you can see that all the fires are con contained within the uh, magnetic zone. The, that area is also the driest area of the country which is precisely where the uh, glow discharge uh, would occur. Okay, here's a world magnetic field change map for 2015 and as you can see the hot spots for magnetic field change is over in the Indonesia, Japan, uh, Southeast Asia area which is now getting pummeled by all kinds of volcanic activity and earthquakes and floods and stuff and then there's a, a hot spot 
uh, on either side of uh, South Africa, Southern Africa, then, and that extends all the way down uh, into Antarctica. And then there's a, you can see there's another hot spot up in the right hand corner. You can see it in the left hand corner too because the map wraps around. And uh, Europe, there's a lot of uh, change, magnetic field change taking place in Europe. Right, here's another magnetic field map that I find really interesting. Uh, notice that on the right hand side of the larger image at the top that the magnetic field is, is pushing up and that the left hand side of the magnetic or the map field is pushing down. And uh, also notice that uh, the northern magnetic pole there's two hot spots up there and the southern magnetic pole is a long strip of continu continuous magnetism. We know that the, the, the north uh, magnetic pole is moving between those two spots and the north. When it gets to the other spot it's going to stop and that's as far as it can go. Another aspect of these plasma discharges taking place in the water underground uh, at high temperatures is they cause things like volcanoes and uh, the ground to swell up and split and uh, we, we see these activities are taking place uh, where the magnetic changes are taking place on the planet and where the hot spots are. Remember plasma is hot and when a plasma ball forms in a body of water on the earth it's going to heat that water up and in a low pressure environment the water is going to evaporate very fast it's going to get sucked up into the atmosphere where it's going to fall back to the earth as rain or snow or hail my last piece of evidence for the moment anyway is a uh, Hawaii magnetic anomaly map and a short uh, film clip from CBS News that I just saw on the news today. Hurricane Lane is still churning offshore, but moving so slowly that band after band of torrential downpours keeps lashing the Big Island on its march through the rest of the state. So with the ground already saturated by a foot of rain on Thursday, another two feet fell last night into this morning. Just shocked. Never have I seen it like this in 43 years. Lane is now heading directly towards Hawaii's most populated islands of Oahu and Maui, where on Waikiki, the area. The beaches are closed. tourists are being warned to stay out of the water, and there's a new threat. Tropical forest winds are pushing a large wildfire on Maui near the town of Lahaina. Five inches of rain are in the forecast for tonight, but until it falls, there's little to stop this fire. You see, it's the same pattern at the uh, magnetic anomalies. And that's it for this video, folks. I'll see you next time.